from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Micah Halpern, sitting in for Tisha Bader, here with the JBS News Update for Monday, September 9th, 2019. Tensions are rising between the coastal enclave Gaza and Israel, and as a result of the escalation situation, Egypt's military and diplomatic leaders rushed from Cairo to Gaza. The goal of Egypt, which abuts the borders of both Israel and Gaza, is to reduce the tensions and bring about a calmer situation. An indication of Egypt's concern is that the Egyptian military intelligence delegation visited the Gaza Strip yesterday, moving up the original timetable, which had been scheduled for later this week. The visit was reported by media outlets in Gaza. The delegation's objective is to lower tensions between Israel and Gaza against the background of recent cross-border violence. Egypt will now message back and forth between the Gazan Israeli leadership. Iran announced that they have surface-to-air missiles, which can, they claim, is on par with the Russian S-400 and the U.S. Patriot missile system. The Iranian missile is called the Bavar 373. According to an Iranian broadcast, the Bavar 373 is so advanced that it can even shoot down the U.S. stealth F-35. Iran's claim that their new missile has a range of 250 miles and radar that kicks in at 300 miles. The Iranians also claim that the Bavar 373 can intercept a fighter jet or a missile as high as 27,000 feet. Video of the Bavar 373 looks impressive. The rocket hit its target. However, analysts point out that there is no proof that the rocket in the video really was a Bavar 373, or that the target it hit was an authentic, difficult-to-hit target. They say it's hardly proof of a super-advanced surface-to-air system. Analysts point out that Iran has mastered the art of video deception. According to a Reuters report, samples taken from Iran by the International Atomic Energy Agency, or the IAEA, which is the United Nations nuclear watchdog agency, showed traces of uranium. Two diplomats who follow the agency's inspection work very closely say that Tehran has not yet provided an explanation for the uranium findings. After the results were announced, Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu renewed his claim that the site where the uranium was found is a, quote, secret atomic warehouse, unquote, in Tehran. The IAEA is investigating the particle's origin and has asked Iran to explain the traces. These responses, counter-responses, and lack of responses are increasing tensions between the United States and Iran. Amazon will open their Israeli division this Thursday, September 12th. All their vendors have been informed that the opening comes only days before the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah and priority should be given to items connected to the holiday. Amazon in Israel is guaranteeing two to three day delivery. When someone in Israel enters the online site, it will be recognized that they are coming from Israel. This is much anticipated. Amazon launch has been on and off again regularly, as recently as a few days ago, but it is now certain that Thursday will be the launch date. The hashtag ban IR sports federations is a call to ban state interference in sports. The hashtag originated in Iran. In the past 24 hours, that hashtag has been used on Twitter more than 60,000 times in Iran. Ban IR Sports Federations was begun after two high-profile events highlighted the sharp disparity between the Iranian regime and Iranians. One of the events was a domestic soccer game, which the Iranians call football. The other was an international judo match. In August, FIFA, the International F Football Association, gave Iran an August 31st first deadline, quote, to pave the way, unquote, for female attendees at games. Despite that deadline, Iran still does not permit women to attend soccer matches. Many Iranians have rallied around a 29-year-old woman who set herself on fire outside a court in Tehran to protest the prison sentence she received for trying to enter a football stadium disguised as a man. This tweet by Azin Sadati, Schmutzer, sums it all up. Iranian woman who tried to enter a stadium a few months ago has been arrested and sentenced to six months in prison. As a result, she has committed self-immolation in protest of the verdict. As for the judo match, the Iranian judoko, or judo champ, Saeed Mulai, 
said he feared for his life after refusing to follow an edict by Iranian authorities to pull out of the 2019 Judo Championships in Japan. The reason for the judoka was told to pull out of the competition was to avoid the prospect of facing an Israeli athlete during the competition. Iran does not recognize the state of Israel and forbids its athletes from competing against Israelis at international sporting events. Mulai said he was told to withdraw from his match against Russia's athlete in order to avoid the prospect of facing Israel's Sagi Muki later in the 2019 Judo World Championships. In the end, the Iranians stayed in the competition but lost in the semifinal. The title was won by Muki, the Israeli. The Israeli has now replaced Mulai, the Iranian, at the top of the world judo ranking for the men's under 81 kilo division. Avichai Adrai, the IDF spokesperson in Arabic, warned that Syrian President Bashar Assad will, quote, pay a heavy price, unquote, for his continued aid to Iran on Syrian soil. Israel's warning was issued after an attempt by pro-Iranian Shiite militia to launch a missile attack from Syria into Israel. In the Twitter post, the IDF spokesman wrote that, and I'm quoting here in translation because it was from Arabic, we warned the regime of Bashar al-Assad that it will pay a heavy price for allowing the Iranians and Shiite militias to operate from within its territory, turning a blind eye and even cooperating with them, end quote. The tweet continued, this thing, meaning the rocket operations, is not hidden from us. You have been warned. And now a look at tonight's programming on JBS. Coming up at 7 is The Wisdom of Dr. Ruth, followed at 7.30 by Jewish Cinematheque with filmmaker Boaz Yohonatan Yaakov, who talks about his new film, Redemption. Then at 8, entrepreneur and philanthropist Don Polada provides some insight about Jewish fundraising. At 8.30, Rabbi Daniel Lapin, an Orthodox rabbi, author, public speaker, who heads the American Alliance of Jews and Christians, discusses the creativity and imagination that goes into making money. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Kem Feinberg discussing 9-11 and victims' families. At 10, Bernard-Henri Lévy, one of the West's leading intellectuals, discusses the changing role of America on the global political scene with historian Simon Shama. I'm Micah Halpern, and this is today's news update from JBS.